All right, hello and welcome back, everyone, to a Sevo Season 3 placement match, a best of three between Nexus Gaming as well as Army Ants United. I'm Helium from FMVP Dota. You can check out other casts of mine from Sevo and NEL at twitch.tv slash FMVP Dota. But this is Game 2, Nexus taking a convincing win there in a Game 1, looking back to their old selves. Maybe still a little rusty, but we'll see what they can bring out here in Game 2. Army Ants United, of course, looking to take the win here tonight. Both of these teams are 3-2 and two in their respective group. And I want to say it's either Group K or Group I. It is the last group. And for some reason, it had a lot of the teams that I've been in contact with. And when I started casting, they reached out to me and let me cast their games. Notably yeah, Nexus, as well as me. Swag and Magikarp. So, I pretty much only cast this group, which is maybe a little unfortunate. Uh, but, either way, what are you going to do? Uh, I'll definitely diversify as we head into Season 3 proper. Uh, and of course, make sure to check out all the information on that. As we do get into the draft, let me, I see, well it's a two minute delay today, but I'll respond to the stream. I am going to be doing some NEL later tonight, a little bit after this BO3 finishes up. And then, uh, yeah, uh, until I get tired or fall asleep or whatever happens. Or I get kicked from the lobbies again. Uh, we'll see what happens. Has now the ban. So, Army Ants United taking out that uh, Wombo combo of supports, I guess. Or just combo of supports. Uh, the Naga Siren as well as the Visage taking out high burst damage early. And, of course, uh, will generally lead to some aggression early on. And familiars are great. As well as the Sleep to Disengage. Terra Mist, meanwhile, again, going with the Bat with the Wisp. Feel we don't really need to explain those. If you want them explained, maybe ask in the chat. As Army Ants United, they like the Nyx Assassin. They go for it. First pick once again. And they follow it up with the Clockwork. So they could be mid. Could be offlane there on the clock. Meanwhile, Termis, they like the Timbersaw. At least Jiggy Fresh does. Uh, likely to be playing it again as it's the first pick. And they go with the Sky Wrath Mage. So a very strong mid against uh, the likes of Quap. Puck, some other int Ten heroes uh, that really can't keep up with the burst damage uh, from Skywrath Mage. Team ban. And we'll see where they put it. Can be run as a support, which I think it maybe functions Radiant a little team. better. He's pretty fragile for the mid lane. Uh, his ultimate's great, but if the teams are really organized, you know, four staffs early, you're not really going to catch anyone in the Mystic Flare. Uh, so we'll see what they decide to do with it as more heroes take the fall. No OD this game, Mike Lau. Doesn't want it, so Army Ants gonna take it out, as well as the Weaver. Nakes gonna be a banned out. Hypnototing did pretty well on it last game, despite still Ten losing it. Remaining. But they take it out, maybe a bit of respect there, or Nakes, of course, Five just a very good carry remaining. at the moment. And Nexus Gaming, once again, I believe, taking out the Gyrocopter as their fourth Reason ban. Time. All right, now Nexus here looking for their third pickup, and all right, it's going to be a PL, uh, maybe a battle PL, because I feel like with Timbersaw and Skywrath, that's a lot of burst damage to not use early on. You know, once BKBs are up, they become a little less important. Of course, Timbersaw is definitely not a right-clicker. He can't even attack when he throws out his Chakram, and Skywrath Mage, uh, absolutely not a right-clicker either. Definitely requires uh the damage from his orb the arcane bolts the concussive shot and of course mystic flare ancient seal though is a pretty nice silence uh three four five and then six level second silence at level four and they pick up the pl so maybe he gets a like a fast you know phase drums defusal yasha or something tries to fight here around the 15 20 minute mark now as army ants united in response to the pl pick they actually go with the coddle so maybe don't want to waste their next ban on it. They're, they can play it as well, so they kind of pick it up to deny that PL Coddle combination. So at least they're not on the same team, but they are in the same game. We'll see how it goes. They tend to be a little slower, but who knows? Could be a lot of action. They've got a Clockwork and Nyx. And Nexus Gaming going for their fourth pickup. It's going to be the CM. So it looks like they may even take this PL aggressive or leave him solo safe with CM Skyrath Timbersaw aggressive tri lane. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Definitely interesting. Um, as Anti Mage will get picked up, let's see if they go with the Magnus. Uh, the pickup there by Army Ants. Uh, Magnus, the Empower onto Anti Mage. Um, definitely almost a cure for the Cancer Lancer. 
It works pretty effectively. Anti-Mage generally gets a battle through as well to flash farm, and then with the stacked and power cleave, it really does a lot against the illusions, and Anti-Mage sort of can fight PL, even one-on-one. -on -one. As Quap takes the ban out by a Nexus, because it looks like Army Ant's still looking for the mid. We'll see if they decide to put Clockwork there. I'm not sure why they banned Quap though, because Skyrath will win that lane. Uh, should win that lane. Um... But they ban out the Quap anyway, so maybe still not revealing the mid. Skyrath could be supporting. As Army Ants goes for the fifth ban right now. <laughs> Spangler. Well, you can, uh, you're a mod Spangler, so you can take care of it if you need to. I would not advise anyone to click on that. Which is why I disabled uh, URL links in my chat, but someone wanted them back on the other day to link something, so I just turned them on. As now Army Ants United here looking for the fifth ban. And it will they ban out the Magnus. Radiant team pick. Okay. Interesting. So no Magnus on either side. I think it would have been pretty good there for Army Ants. It's not the only answer, of course. Anti Mage with the Battle Fury uh, by himself is a pretty good answer to the Phantom Lancer. That was now Nexus going for the fourth pick. I'd probably say it's going to be a mid. Or maybe like another core for a tri lane. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. What is left? I mean, Alchemist is left in the pool right now. All oh, the anti mage with the higher win rate over Alchemist. So we'll have to see what they want to go for. Time. Nature's Prophet, Lone Druid, anyone on that long lane. The Darkseer is still available as well. Puck, more team fight control. Good freezing field that can actually do a lot of damage. They go with the Tinker, so another hero Caillou definitely likes. Uh, so Caillou gonna be taking the Tinker into the mid lane. Looks like then probably defensive PL CM Skyrath and look for them to probably roam around together pretty early like they did the last game. See if they don't gank mid very early on. And Timbersaw to the off lane again. Now Army Ants United looking for the fourth pick. And uh, the winner of last game, someone asking in the chat, was actually Nexus Gaming. And you'll see that the in-game indicators will be on. Army Ants United will go with the Warlock. So Spangler wanted the clinks. Not going to be the case. They put the Warlock mid. So going for that big team fight. Maybe trying to thwart any of that early aggression. Or any of that uh, early push, I guess, with the Illuminate as well as the threat of the Golem. The chaotic offering there from Warlock. We'll see how that works out for him. Of course, Java looks to be playing that offlane clockwork. Did pretty well on the Nature's Prophet. We'll see if his uh, hook into the Cog's Battery Salt is going to make a big difference this game. Skyrath and CM, definitely easy targets. Going to both be very squishy. They're heroes with very low health, but very high int gain. Um, we'll see what happens here. Of course, Anti Mage likely to obliterate them as well. Lots of mana to burn through. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And there we are into the game. So let's go ahead and introduce the teams once again on the dire. Actually, we've got Army Ants United. We have Hypno Toting playing the one roll on that Anti Mage. Going to go Stout Shield. Tango's healing salve, not going to be pulled anything by the supports. We've got Rule, once again playing here on the Nyx Assassin. 74 on the Coddle. Java Hulk will be taking the Clockwork Goblin Stout Shield and some regen, so taking it to the offlane. Uh, we'll get Rocket first, just to scout early on. A lot of times on the Dire, they'll just go for the Cogs, so that you can do this little trick and uh, funnel them in here. You put the Cogs, like, here, and then you chop down this tree. And then you funnel them in, and then you stand here. I'm drawing everywhere. And you trap them inside. And it's definitely very effective to get, to get the wave right up to your tower. Uh, pick up some XP early on. And Mike Lau, last but not least, on the Warlock, uh, will be going into the mid lane as Rule. They don't want to give him the ward, so Rule just goes down there quickly, oh, throws see. one down, and now uh, we'll go back top. And let's see if it will be quickly dewarded. Fallen is here. Well, they drop the sentry. It's being pinged out by Pink. So that's Anti Mage. The tri lane is defensive, as you might expect. We'll see what Clockwork can get done. Uh, definitely a tri lane where he, where he can get very zoned out. 
But let's quickly introduce Nexus here on the Radiant. We've got Teramis again in that one roll this time. On the PL, Rakuto going to be supporting on the Crystal Maiden. As well with Fallen here on the Skywrath Mage. Take it over to the mid lane. We've got Caillou on Tinker. A hero that he definitely impressed me with back in the day on in Sivo Season 1 and earlier in Sivo Season 2. And once again, Jiggy Fresh playing here on the Timber Saw in that off lane. So he was safe lane last game, so they mixed it up a little bit. They take it defensive with the PL. We'll see what they can get done with that and how early they want to fight. Do these supports have a smoke? There is a smoke up here on Rakuto, so look for them to maybe roam over. As I'm surprised they didn't just try to guess and deward that with the sentry. The camp isn't even blocked. They didn't opt for it. Uh, putting a ward... Where is the other ward? They haven't dropped it yet, or was it already taken out? Rule still holding on to it, actually. I thought he maybe put it in the lane, uh, or you know, put it mid, put it on the top rune as well. At least Warlock would be able to see what it is. They can definitely see if uh, Caillou gets it. Although not one for rune control, really. Looking for him to just... Yeah, already doing it. St spamming that march. Stand here. Throw the march this way. And then uh, stack those creep, those ancients. And then uh, clean them up a little later on. Get those boots to travel rolling around like 8 or 9 minutes if you do it well. And of course the soul ring after that. And then probably into a blink dagger to get the lanes uh, pushing out there. Split push with the PL. They don't have the Coddle Relocate, but uh, they do have the Boots of Travel, the Rearm Tinker, as Jiggy Fresh. No XP yet, still sitting at level 1, as Coddle doing a good job zoning, and I like it. They've got the Nyx Assassin here. The ward is down here. Alright, I'm about to spill some secrets that I learned from NEL last night. This war, if you put the Sentry here, it is the... Definitely the best place to deward the camp. It gives you the vision like in this arc, I think. So any of the any of the uh, wards that are normally placed in here, here, or here, you're gonna find all of them. And then worst case, they put it like here. You can yeah, just drop this one or just drop this one. Uh, but either way, just some tips there, I guess. I like to draw on the map, so there you have it. And we can see Nexus. They did win in game one, so looking to make it 2-0, perhaps. The last couple games I have cast in Sivo Season the Replacements did make it to 3. Uh, we'll see if this one can. Let's see if Army Ants United can rally. As uh, Jiggy Fresh looking to get some XP. Does actually hit level 2. The mana burn hurting him a little bit. And actually, maybe it... Mm, I don't know. AM's kind of fragile. I was thinking they could probably leave him alone against that Timber Saw. Maybe after a while, get a couple... Get him to 6... Keep Timbersaw still pretty low, and then you could probably rotate these supports out of this lane, put some more pressure on the PL, because right now PL, uh, he's basically free farming 14 and 3, the most last hits in the game. No XP yet here at 3 minutes lane, equilibrium from Terramis thus far, very good. Fallen will pick up the double damage right now, looking to maybe take out uh, the clockwork. And in the top lane, Jiggy Fresh, so will get in that XP, so the off lane definitely working out a little better right now for the Radiance uh, than the Dire. As Caillou in the mid lane, where's he at? We see him at 5 and 4. Mike Lau with the bottle up as well. He's 11 and 6, so definitely controlling the lane in terms of last hits. Uh, pretty solid animation right now. Um, or not right now. Solid animation to last hit there on the Warlock. Uh, more so than Tinker's. His is a little slow. Floats around. The travel time is a little slower as well. It can be hard. Uh, meanwhile, on the top lane, 74. No points in mana leak to maybe just mess around with Jiggy Fresh. Keep him low. I mean, they've got the mana burn. The mana... or Yeah, mana burn. Mana burn. Mana leak. And then mana break. So, of course, they could completely deplete his mana. Send him back. Again, continue to zone him out of XP. Without mana, he's got no damage. He's got no timber chain. Uh, so, maybe one point in mana leak wouldn't be terrible for him as mid lane. Maybe they're trying to gank it here. Mike Lau, he's not yet six. The frost goes out. It's going to keep him there. Kai, what's he got? Rockets are available. The heal from Mike Lau, though, it's a lot. And they're going to maybe throw the rockets. No, he's not even going to waste the mana. Just not. It doesn't burst for too much. Yeah, only 100, actually. He was sitting around maybe 200 HP there. So, Mike Lau able to live. Uh, CM rotates over. And let's see. I mean, that defensive lane, they really only need the Skywrath, I think, to go ahead and zone. He's doing the pull-throughs right now, even jungling with his Illusion Rune. So, Fallen doing well to try to get his levels up early. As uh, Rakuto, with the Frostbite, it stuns neutrals. Check it out. It stuns neutrals for 10 seconds on creeps level 5 or lower. I don't know what creeps are 5. I guess the Ancients. Um, so, it probably doesn't work on the... Let's see if we find any dragons. Oh, perfect. 
Yeah, it would work on them too. Uh, but either way, he's doing it now. It stuns it for 10 seconds. Uh, you can jungle with it at two points in it and arcane aura. Skill it up there at level 3. And then, of course, you can jungle, get your levels pretty quickly. Uh, you're going to be off the map as well. So if you do decide to roam, no one's going to be able to really call the Mias. As it looks like Skyrath does take over zoning here. And Terramis, that hatchet. Tranquil Boots finished up here too. They could leave him alone if they need to. But uh, why not? The Hurting Clockworks XP so much. They're even zoning him away from the XP that he could be getting at the tower. So they're doing a very good job of shutting him down. Just hits level 2 now at 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Shiggy Fresh, meanwhile. About 3.5 doing work on the Hypnototing. Timber Chain, not going to go quite far enough. And he's got the two points in reactive armor as well. Maybe could have went for one in Whirling Death. Uh, the reactive armor, two points, seems to be that magic number for the most efficient sort of regen. And then, of course, balancing with the damage. But meanwhile, dive bottom on the Java. This could be the first blood. It will be the first blood. Rakuto on the Crystal Maiden, a hero that normally gives up the first blood. Gonna go ahead and grab it here in game two. Taking out that Clockwork. Now up to level four on the Crystal Maiden. Clockwork, meanwhile, still at two, but... Almost three, so he really just needs that six, get the hook online, and then they can start rolling some ganks here on the Tinker. He's going to be instrumental in shutting down the Tinker. Can just wait in the lane with the hook, wait for the TP to come in, and then kill Tinker every single time and make Caillou's life uh, pretty miserable, as they actually do block the camp. So they only stack it up twice, but I think the sentries are still available on Fallen, so he'd only used one ward as well. Uh, maybe bottom up. I think he actually is rewarding, so I take that back. Uh, but maybe time to deward their ancients as Jiggy Fresh getting dove in the top lane. Hypnototing wants to go aggressive on this. Still a lot of mana here for Jiggy Fresh. And it looks like he will be fine. And it's a big dive right now as Nyx Assassin uh, will go ahead and lag out of the game. The Astrofair preaching there in stream chats. Is Jenkins playing this game? No. The name rings a bell. Why does that ring a bell? I think he plays for Rare Candy, doesn't he? I'm not sure. A team I've definitely cast. They're in this group as well. It's about the only group. I think I did one other match that was outside of this group in the Sevo Season 3 placements, but, uh, I definitely covered a bit. I think there was only six rounds, and I think I got every six. I covered swag mainly. Uh, they're just the easiest games to be alerted to because I'm friends with all of them. But uh, we sit at 1 0. Nyx has lagged out, taking a DC. Was maybe going to set up mid on the gank. Picked up an invis rune, it looks like. No, he's actually just smoked up. Uh, Impale and the mana burn, gonna maxing that out. Gonna maybe want to get one point in there here at uh, level five. We'll see what he decides to do. As, uh, yeah. And there he reconnects, and let's see what was happening. They were trying to maybe dive uh, Jiggy Fresh here. He's got an Illuminate coming his way. He's pretty low. Uh, let's see. They could blink forward and be aggressive. Three points in the mana break right now. Uh, so they definitely want to try to take him down. And yellow, I think, pinging uh, to maybe come deward this camp. They know it's there. It's been there for a while. Alright, so back to the game. Jiggy Fresh will dodge the Illuminate, and it looks like he's going to be eating just fine. Him not turning, though, they're creep skipping. Uh, no aid to Jiggy Fresh right now. CM doesn't want to come. She's jungling during the pull through. Almost level 6. Top. Nope. Terramis, though, continuing to free farm. 44 and 11 right now. Anti Mage, only 34 and 10. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to have a pretty fast Battle Fury, but we'll see who can hit their stride first in this game. Uh, the first carry to maybe get involved in the team fights, probably going to be the team that wins. Uh, maybe. I can't really say that definitively, but uh, we'll see what happens here. PL is quite strong, of course, with the Battle Fury and the Flash Farming from Anti Mage. Can definitely farm faster than the PL uh, with that Battle Fury, and of course, four points in Blink. We'll see what he gets. Maybe 12, 13 minute Battle Fury. No boots yet, so he likes to be rushing it quite quickly. Meanwhile, mid lane. Rule trying to help out, trying to get level 6 here. As Coddle is up to level 4. He's level 4 as well. Looks like Coddle, the one going to stick around in the lane, try to protect Anti Mage here. Maybe he could be stacking up and doing his own thing, give Anti Mage some more levels. But here come Rakuto and Fallen. They're grouping up here. They will be smoked. Levels 5 and 4. So we got 2 points in the Frostbite. 
uh, fallen one in each pretty much how you do that hero gonna max the arcane bolts and the seal after that They will find the coddle frostbite opt concussion to go as well arcane orb follows will take it fallen Picking up that kill, so the ports for Nexus once again coming up big in the early game out to an early 2-0 lead, and they're just doing the laning stage better as well. We see about a 2,000 gold lead and uh, XP a little over 2,000 as well for Nexus right now as PL. Let's see what his build is. He's got Spirit Lance, Juxtapose, Phantom Edge, so that's what, four? That's all seven. Uh, probably going to go Juxtapose and Stats after this as the ganks aren't really going to be coming for a while, so you don't really need to worry about... Doppelwalk doesn't get any better. Uh, other than the fact that the cooldown gets lower, so you don't really need more than one point in it. Unless you think you're going to be getting ganked a lot, or the carry dust. Of course, with the lower cooldown, you can purge yourself with your defusal you will likely have, and then use Doppelwalk again, so it can be pretty effective for your survivability, but we'll see if they need it this game. Hypnototing will be frostbitten there by Rakuto, now level 6. Does actually opt for the freezing field, which is pretty interesting. Um, a lot of times you just don't get that. Let's see why. There's an Impale, there's a Chaotic Offering, and a Battery Assault. So there's a bit to go ahead and cancel that, as they maybe want to go here for 74. This looks to be his death. Timber Chain not going to land. He needs to do the Whirling Death, and he will. 74 drops 3-0 right now as Timber Saw laughs his uh, somewhat annoying laugh. Alright, here comes the Soul Ring. We got Soul Ring, we've got Boots of Speed, we've got Bottle, what else is on this courier? No Boots of Travel yet here, and we are already at 10 minutes, so Caillou having a difficult time in the mid lane, he's 30 and 8, Mike Lau now, 43 and 14 on the Warlock, Haste, and a Bottle as well as Arcane Boots, so no Chaotic Offerings yet, he's level 8, he hasn't really been forced to TP anywhere, no big engagements, just the support roaming, it looks like we will maybe see the first rock of the game as the supports are coming in the backside of this, let's see what they can do, they're gonna find him now. Silence goes out, so maybe no rock. Is there enough burst damage coming in the rockets? Yes! The silence now lasting, of course, for five seconds. So that's going to be a hero instrumental in making sure there's no golems in these fights. And I think if Army Ants wants to take any fights, they're absolutely going to need that golem up. And it may never come if uh, Fallen is on the mark tonight on that uh, Skywrath Mage. Meanwhile, Rule about to hit level 6. Coddle here, level 4 still, as uh, they want to kill... The, gy the gyro. Close. Um, the clockwork here in the bot lane. SPL heading into the jungle now. Almost has that defusal. Rule could be in a lot of trouble. I think he will go down here. Let's see what happens. He's got no mana. He's very low. Mana break to go. It's going to be enough. Hypno Toting picks up the kill. Puts his team on the board right now. But here come the supports. The arcane bolt goes out onto Rule. Will it be enough? Not quite. He lives with 23 HP actually. Uh, even the rockets from Clockwork trying to assist and uh, driving back the supports. They're not going to chase. Would have been too risky. But PL still continuing the farm. In terms of net worth, he's way out in front right now. 4,600 in the mid lane. We've got Caillou even. Doing actually not half as bad as I thought he was. Now after clearing that ancient stack, he's up to a lot of gold. Almost has the travel as well as the soul ring at a pretty decent time. As now asking for help up top is Jiggy Fresh. Pings his tower out. Well, still, he'll take the mana hit. He's got mana boots uh, to dodge that blast right there. Probably worth it as the push. The bot tower is very low right now. So PL, as well as his illusions, not putting points in the doppelwalk, doing very well. Hypnototing goes down as well. The damn. Oh, wow. That's actually really good with Chakram. Of course, it also. Um, Takes away the magic reduction or resistance there by 30% onto the chakram, which does a ton of damage 50 damage per second right now So that's definitely gonna hurt and the silence is a great hero versus the anti-mage And it's kind of funny that Skyrath was the second pick and they still decided to pick an anti-mage as well as a warlock after it We see Terramus take out the clockwork there on the bot lane make it 6-1 right now Oh, you thought it was Avanti's Angels. I got it. Yeah, I got a little lazy tonight with the typing. I came back, like, right before it started, so I just put AA. I thought I did AAU, though, to differentiate. As the first golem of the game will lead to another kill. Oh, it's AA in the game. I got you now. Uh, it's the first kill of the game there for Army Ants United as they take out the Timber Saw on the top lane. Let's see the two deaths here for... Nexus, it's gonna be both on Jiggy Fresh, actually. But he's getting a lot out of the lane. He's got the levels right now. We can see him. He's level 8. 
compared to anti mage at 8, so he's doing very well in the offlane. He's at the same level, not being zoned at all. Levels on Timbersaw are bad. The silence goes out once again. The Frostbite. Hypnototing takes another fall. Way too far out there by himself with that silence, the Frostbite. And of course, the burst damage from the Timbersaw are just too much. Hypnototing goes down again, taking another death. 1 and 2 right now. Mike Lau trying to put the Golem to work right now. Summons it up from the depths of hell and then makes it farm the dire jungle. Uh, get himself some more golds. Uh, we'll go arcane boots. Didn't go for a Midas early. He was doing well in the lane. Maybe he could have got away with it straight into the Midas sort of Ags build. Clockwork or even uh, Coddle here could have handled the mechanism. Uh, we'll see who actually will get the mechanism as Mike Lau getting closer. But with this game, they might, might really need the uh, Ag Scepter pretty soon. However, PL getting a strong, has a Diffusal Blade, almost has a Yasha now, so maybe looking to fight uh, once he finishes those. Maybe disassemble the Tranquils, get some Treads as uh, the Frostbite goes out. Freezing Field is going to be enough to maybe pick up the kill. Long range from downtown, doesn't go quite far enough is the Chakram. Rakuto, though, skilled Freezing Field earlier than you normally see it. I mean, it definitely got buffed, and it's pretty good, but you don't usually see it at level 6, and he picks up a Blink Dagger right now. They don't know this. Maybe they saw the little sparks. They might know that a rule is around. He's not going to know that Kai is around, though. Picked up the Invis rune. Will he decide to go on CM? He will, and this is probably going to be his death. No, everyone else is there as well. Mike Lau, they're going to get him. Java comes in with the Battery Assault, takes him out there. Will get the kill, but he drops Crystal. No, Tinker picks him up. The March of the Machines. Wow, a double kill. They're looking for the Courier as well. One more attack from anybody. But they're not going to be able to get it. The Courier will live. It was loaded. Wards, Blades of Attack, Gauntlet of Strength, a TP, and a Mantle of Intelligence on that. That would have been... They're not huge items, but they would have been pretty big. Caillou once again working here on some stacks. Boots of Travel are online. Sorry, yeah. Just noticed that Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. As Terramus with the DD just works on the bot tower, has a siege engine behind him, and yeah, with the DD going to town. As Doppelwalk probably could escape. Let's check if they're buying any dust on the side of army ants. Uh, doesn't look like it. They've got sentries on rule, but that's about it. Oh, that tiger is so cool. The Nexon League tiger. Oh, I'm reading the lore of that mount, and I'm missing kills. Uh, Mike Lau will take a fall in the mid lane on the Warlock. Me? No, I was going to say maybe lagged out. Fallen actually pauses the game. He's lagging up a little bit right now. 10-3, and three, though, here in game two. So Nexus looking to maybe just take it 2-0. Oh, getting pretty far ahead. 10,000 experience lead already. That's really big. And the gold lead pretty big as well. As it's only 15 minutes, 40 seconds. 7,500 gold lead at the moment. And still a pause. So for anyone wondering, this is the SIVO Season 3 placement matches to try to get into main. Uh, both of these teams a little bit on the fringe. Nexus Gaming, I would have said, was a main team for sure a couple months ago. But uh, definitely have lost a little bit of their uh, teamwork as they sub in two new players here to try to get the new lineup going. And uh, I don't know if they've been playing a whole lot of Dota, so looking a little rusty. And we'll see if they can make it in. Uh, as well as Army Ants United. Both of them said 3-2 in this group. Swag leads it. And uh, Magikarp as well. They took a lot of forfeits early. But, uh... Yeah. Rakuto really does. They like to give me a lot of crap for this. Rakuto wonders why I don't let him co-cast with me. Maybe if he was nicer... Alright, anyway, 10 to 3. Like I said, I've known Nexus for a long time. I got started one of the very first teams that I've cast and kind of cast a lot. They would get me into their lobbies for Sevo and some other tournaments. Um, they were Taw.net back then and then picked up the Nexus sponsor. Uh, but So, know them all pretty well as they are quite ahead here. They've picked a boring hero in the PL, but he's being pretty active. He's pushing down towers, looking to get his second one here as very low illusions. Uh, going to town. He's being a little cautious. I mean, I don't know. They haven't even put pressure on him once. Even if he takes a death, it won't be too big of a deal at the moment. He's very far ahead of the pack. Um, yeah, 7,300 net worth. Next on his team is Caillou here. Rule gonna pop the Vendetta just to escape as uh, 74 camping around in the mid lane with Mike Lau. So 
Lots of magic damage between the two of them, but let's see, he's level 10. Well, let's compare that up. Tinger is at level 12 right now, so Mike Lau losing in levels of all the gold and the XP that the Ancients have kicked in there for Tinker. Uh, even Timbersaw and Terranus are above him as well, but definitely wants uh, level 2 ultimate. As the pings come out, they gank Hypno-Toting once again. He's pretty close to the Battle Fury, of course, though. No boots, so a very naked Battle Fury, and it's already 17 minutes, 10 seconds right now. 73 last hits, though. It's not terrible, but the Frostbite comes in. The Blink Dagger as well. Everything else to follow. The Chakram is what's going to do it, though. Jiggy Fresh cleans him up, and that Blink Dagger from Rakuto is really paying off here. Uh, got it extremely early. And you can see why the gold graph so much in their advantage. XP even more so. As four of the five uh, top levels right now, only Mike Lau there in fourth place. Just behind him is a Crystal Maiden, a support. Uh, so definitely taking a hit in the levels at the moment. In terms of items, uh, lots of Blink Daggers, Diffusal, Yasha. So some core items to be fresh looking. Ooh. Coddle getting low. Jiggy Fresh looking for another Bloodstone. Um, Hypno Toting looking for the Battle Fury, but not finding it yet. Mike Lau going for the Ags. And uh, maybe 74 going for either Tranquil Boots or a Mech with that. So, really, no items of uh, really any importance up on Army Ants yet. And the Rockets from Caillou go on to a killing spree. Make it 12 3 right now. And Terramus has yet to get involved. All of this, I guess it's sort of been 4v4. Anti-Mage not getting involved too much either. And he's got to be careful. He could potentially go down here. He's a very squishy. Uh, the Spirit Lances are going to hurt. And the tower now quite low. Terramus doing work. Maybe it's about time to just group up. Go in bot. Oops. Caillou, wow. They got the denial on it. He threw out the march to maybe try to push it. Although Terramus wasn't there, maybe he could have just waited on that. Uh, that deny, it's not huge, of course, because of their lead, but you never want your tower to be denied. It definitely gives a sense of purpose back to the other team. Some more morale, like, hey, we denied a tower. Um, I don't know, it helps out. Like any sport or esport, momentum plays a big part. The rockets go out. Looks like Fallen will clean it up before we get the camera there with the Mystic Flare. So playing really well right now, 4-0 and 4. We can see Skywrath is a solid support. I know he was messed around in the pro scene with a little bit, but just because of the other heroes, Naga being rediscovered pretty much, Visage as well, and then Elder Titan being added back in. I mean, he's kind of just fallen out of favor since when he got added to Dota 2 into the captain's mode, was picked up quite a bit, and then just sort of fell out of favor there as they pushed the last tier 1 tower remaining for Army Ants United. Nexus Gaming looking... So the last hit this one, not going to get denied, as Jiggy Fresh will go down top. That tier 2 is also quite low, as well as this one was denied, and now there's about 1 and uh, maybe 1 tenth of a tier 2 tower remaining for Army Ants, as Rakuto working hard with the Blink Dagger right now. 2, 1, and 7. And what is this? He's picking up here the Urn of Shadows recipe. So he's got that completed for his team to heal up and uh, push just a little more effectively with that, as now the Manta style is going to come out to the PL. He's got the Fusil Blade 1. Still a lot of charges though, so probably not going to upgrade it as he's going to want to look to fight now, probably, as we approach the 20 minutes. Antimage just now has that Battle Fury and it was a naked one. No boots. Compare that to PL, who is sitting net worth. He's 5,000 gold ahead of him, so we can see uh, at this rate, the game looking amazing for Nexus, especially even with the Antimage as Phantom Lancer takes down the horse. He will drop the old man on the horse down. As it's 14 to 4. Who actually got the kills for Army Ants? Let's see. Anti Mage picked up one. Warlock picked up one. Clockwork got one. And looks like another one was either a suicide uh, or deny or dying to neutrals. But I'm assuming it was just the creep uh, stealing the kill there, so it split it up. The creep tend to do that. They're pretty greedy. They go for the chaos every time it's available. As uh, mid, gonna get pushed here by the Siege Engine. And let's see, Terramis still just trying to push bot. The top tower pretty low. I don't know why they don't group and go for that one. It is extremely low right now. Tinker was coming in, did just cancel it. Maybe could have still gone as Jiggy Fresh will go in, throws out the Chakram here. Java Hulk, of course, has the hook, will stun up, rule behind this. Jiggy Fresh needs to get out of there. The Vendetta hit does a lot, the tower as well, but oh, the Chaotic Offering will take him out. Caillou, meanwhile, 
Maybe could have rearmed and thrown another rocket. It goes one for one. Lancer picks up clockwork in this engagement. Now Rakuto looking for the bug. Nyx Assassin to drop. Caillou dominating off of this team fight. Make it 16 to 5. And this tower likely to go down. Of course, the top tier two. We looked at it earlier. Very low. As who is that? It's Anti Mage trying to get the split push going. Doing all he can really now with boots. Looking to get some other items, but Teramis has his sights on the tier three. Probably should back and will. All right, Jiggy Fresh completes that Bloodstone. Took a death as soon as he got it as well. Being a little crazy diving behind the tier two in the top. Uh, loses two charges, so he's got the old school six charge Bloodstone. Uh, used to start with six, now starts with eight. Uh, but I think they reduced how it works per charge, so I think it's about the same as it was, although I have, really have no idea. I just know that it is 8 now, and Timbersaw buys it a lot. So let's maybe read it. I know a little more than that, but... Uh, so it gives you a lot of base health and, of course, mana. 500 health, 400 mana, 9 HP regen, plus 200% mana regen, and you get, I believe, charges per the kill, of course. And I think you get mana regen, it stacks... Uh, the charges stack up the mana regen. I think it used to do both health and mana regen, but I'm pretty sure it's just mana regen now. As, uh, yeah. Definitely helps out the Timbersaw. Who's already got the reactive armor, so he's very tanky. But, oh, it also reduces the, uh, gold per death. And, of course, the respawn rate as well. And now, actually the best part about it, uh, I think that Bloodstone needs updated, because it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about it, actually. Um, you can also kill yourself with it, the suicide, to heal your teammate, which is nice. And you get XP from the team fights at the spot you have died um, while you're respawning. So anything that happens afterwards, you will get the XP for. And I want to say maybe the charge is not sure. Either way, it's a pretty interesting item. Uh, they made that suicide change to get it picked back up in the metagame. Not sure if it really helped, but it's more so that just Timbersaw showed up into the scene and it's a very good item for him to pick up as Roche gets killed by the Dyer so wow he's gonna take that uh, XP as well as the gold from it but of course they still get the Aegis right now Dominate. what a player there 74 on that Coddle will steal the last hit there but the tier 3 push maybe coming in here where's that urn from Rakuto doesn't have any charges on it yet uh, Rakuto buys a gem as well so they're really looking to take map control here Anti-Mage continuing to try to push out this bot lane as well as find his farm. And let's see, Tinker now. Oh, Tinker makes games so boring. Just go with the team and push the mid lane. As it is 16, it's a 5. Actually, they should just go top, so maybe they should go with Tinker. That tier 2 is still remaining. It's another tower to get. I'll be in NEL soon, alright? After this here. Uh, looks like it's likely going to be 2-0, uh, so we can get into that next NEL lobby. It's a 20,000 gold lead right now for Nexus, 20,000 XP lead as well, so wow, they're very, very far ahead. Him Tony looking to get a kill, Jiggy Fresh chunks him there uh, with the Whirling Death, and now the Frostbite onto the trees. We're on more Whirling Death, won't get it in time, but was still on cooldown, Jiggy Fresh. Probably going to get away from this, yeah, hooks to that tree. Tinker comes in from the backside, Caillou now onto a mega kill streak. And let's see what he's sitting at. 5-0 oh, and 1 right now. Mike Lau in trouble. Will drop. Double kill. Triple kill here for Caillou. The March of the Machines doing work as now. Ooh, does that get stunned for... No, it doesn't. I always thought that got stunned. Oh, Caillou, though, still going crazy. Does run out of mana, so he can't pick up the Ultra. It's 19-5, to five, though, right now. The Golem will be taken out by Jiggy Fresh. And there's the GG by Hypnototing. So, this, I believe, was the actual very last SIVO Season 3 placement match to be played. So... Um, in the group stages, of course, I believe there still is a bracket, so we'll get into that. And then, of course, I'll be bringing you NEL, but I'll shut down the stream first, so when you see that message that we've gone live again, there will be no delay, so make sure to check it out. We have a lot of fun. I'll try not to make those same mistakes that I made last night tonight. Got a bit crazy there, as that was retarded and very dumb of me. But either way, hope you enjoyed SIVO. Check it out. Get involved. SIVO.com. And make sure to follow twitch.tv slash FMBPDOTA.